a journeyman pay to do, come and fight. Come and fight that sort of gym and, and entertain the crowd. You're training hard, you're fighting every week, you're doing it for your kids and your family. And it's, it's just it just means a lot to me. And this is this is all I would ever want to do. This is what I want to be and this is what I want to do. I enjoy it, I love the adrenaline rush. Um, it's the way it works. No one cheers and screams for me. I could land a massive knockout blow. I just think I'm going to get one person to sit there and clap their hands. Of course they ain't. They don't care about me. It's the hardest pound note you can possibly get. I mean, look, once you're in against 500, say, screaming people, screaming to get you hurt and hit, that, there's a hell of a lot easier ways to earn a pound note. I mean, for me, it was, it was, it was a passion. No fighter starts off thinking, I want to be a journeyman, you know, it happens to circumstance in life. Sometimes they're actively asked to lose. Sometimes it's just presumed that they're going to lose. But they've got no illusions about the fact that they're not in the winning corner, they're in the loser's corner. With five stadium shows in just over the last 12 months, British boxing is on a high. This ancient combat sport turned multi-billion pound industry has brought us household names like Muhammad Ali, Floyd Money Mayweather and Anthony Joshua. But behind all the glory, it turns out that there is more to boxing. We're talking about the boxers who fight when nobody is watching, in venues that you've probably never even heard of. They are respected by insiders and misunderstood by many. These are the boxers who fight with predominantly losing records. But if sport as a whole is all about rewarding its winners, how is it that these boxers can survive by losing? To make it to get to an open old age, right? Curtis Gargano is a professional boxer, but not quite what you would expect. Out of 49 bouts in the ring, he has never won a fight. And even though his next fight is his 50th, he's preparing like he would any other. So a journeyman is someone who's ready every day of the year, who can fight every week. And when the phone rings, if Joe rings me and says, oh, there's a fight tomorrow, I'm ready for that fight. On weight, fitness, everything. Ready every week and not every three months. When I was younger, I wanted to be a world champion, but as life goes on, things have changed. Things have happened in my earlier life, but stop that. So when I was 30 years old, it was the best way of making legit money for my family. I train every day, twice a day. I eat healthy, diet, you know, get massages. Six days a week I train, I have one day off. Sometimes I might have two days off, depends. If I box, if I box on a Saturday, I'll, I'll come back on the Monday, because I'll be fighting again on the next Saturday. Curtis's manager weighs him after the day's training. Before he can box, Curtis has to make weight and fit into his weight category. He's aiming to lose a few pounds before fight night. Joe, his manager, runs Northside Gym and manages several professional boxers. No one since there's about 12 when he's an amateur boxer. Uh, come to the gym with his uncle, Eric Noy. And I trained him upstairs, done a few pads with him and that. And uh, he was a good amateur. Now he's got all those, gone into the pro game and it's like, he's gone into the journeyman mode, where he just loses on purpose, to tell you the truth, to earn money. And if he wins too many fights, he doesn't get no fights. He doesn't get no more fights, because he's winning. If he wins two fights on a bounce, the phone stops ringing, so no more matches for him. Yeah, so he's got to, he's not got to lose, but he goes in there, does his job, gets beat, gets paid, the week after the phone goes, Joe, can you get Kurtz for next Friday? Why does the phone stop ringing? Because he's won. And the, the trainers and the managers of the boxers think he's winning now, so be careful. Don't need him. Not many people can be a journeyman because of pride. And they haven't got the toughness in them, some of them. They're not hard enough to be a journeyman. People like giving out beatings, but they can't take one. You've got to be mentally, physically strong to be able to, to, to lose. Not many people can do that. What do you think people think when they look at your boxing record? 
probably think, oh, he's crap him or whatever, yeah. But it bad, that's the thing with me. It does hurt a little bit, but I'm not really bothered because, it's, you know, it's done boxing, li good, done a good life, living for me, a good life. I'm not bothered, I'm not ashamed, I don't know. There's not many out there who can have 50 fights and only get stopped five times, and really, I've only been stopped once. And that's the main thing, not getting stopped for me. Jab, jab, move your head after every punch. So always punches coming back. Keep your hands up, keep loose. Double jab, three jabs, one, twos, bam, bam. Keep moving, force, bam, 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 bam. Bam, left up, right hand, move. <coughs> The boxers that journeymen fight are called prospects and are boxers with potential to reach a higher fighting level. Christy Collins is a junior amateur champion who trains at Northside. He's considered a strong upcoming prospect and he's only 15 years old. He's a very nice guy, he's always training hard and he's always like, when you ask him any questions, he's always saying like, yeah, I'm training for this fight, training for that fight, I'm fighting every week, fighting every few days and that, so. He's doing it for his family, so I think it's, it's, it's good for him because he likes it, he likes what he's doing, he wants, to, he wants to be in the gym and that's so all like, best for him, whatever he wants to do and it's for his kids and his family, so making money for himself. I think it's because he's, truthfully, his dad was a top journeyman. You know, Desi Gagano was under no fights uh, journeyman in the 1970s, I think it was. Yeah, the 80s. He had about 20 odd wins, I think he had, out of 150 fights, something like that. But he went to win if, he, if the kid wasn't prepared. And also he boxed Nazi and Ahmed. So, you know, his dad's been with top kids. Boxing is in Curtis's DNA. It was the death of his late father, Dez, that pushed Curtis to get back into the ring. Yeah, so this is uh, just on the way to my dad's grave now. Uh, been here now uh, nearly 10 years. 2010 we buried him. He's got cancer at the age of 40, uh, 49. Dad had 123 fights and was one of the main journeymen in the 90s, late 1980s uh, and early 90s, 1990s. Yeah, me and my dad was like brothers, we went fishing every weekend, we were close with the boxing. The boxing made us close and the fishing made us close as well because we was together. Everything in his life was for his kids, which he worked hard every day on a building site and boxed every twice a week even. You know what I mean? Give us a good life, to be fair. I I never wanted to be a journeyman. I used to think he was a loser. I, he, he didn't realise how much he meant to me until after he went. Cause I didn't realise, obviously, he had, he had to be a journeyman, he was making money, but I just think he was stupid for that. And it's mad how I've ended up being a journeyman, which is, that's the crazy thing about it. But I wouldn't change it for the world, you know what I mean? This is Joe Somerville. He was your archetypal journeyman. And he's one of the best friends I've ever had in my life. Not just in boxing, but in life. Whilst Curtis survives on losses to feed his family and fuel his passion, boxing writer Melanie Lloyd believes that journeymen actually have an integral role in shaping world champions. A world champion boxer will always salute journeymen. You'll always, they'll always salute journeymen. They'll always recognise you know, how lucky they were to have men like that to learn against. Um, they, they, they will really respect journeymen. Well, any, cha any fighter will respect a journeyman, whether he's a world champion or not. Because like I said, they're the engine room of the sport. They, 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 they're vital to the sport. And we all like to see the underdog make good. But invariably, nine out of 10 times, that journeyman is doing a job of work, right? He's putting money in the bank, He's putting food on the table. He's giving his children and his family a better life than what he had. And the way he's earning his living by doing that is by being a journeyman. And he knows that the trade-off for doing that is that he's not in the winning corner. 
he's in the losing corner. I think men like Amir Khan, Tyson Fury, Anthony Joshua, they've got a lot to thank the journeymen for, without any shadow of a doubt, yeah. This is my award I received from the London ex Boxer Association, um, which is a marvellous organisation. But if journeymen help prospects become boxing champions, why is boxing organised this way in the first place? The journeyman doesn't have to sell tickets, whereas the prospect, it's a huge pressure mm. to sell tickets. I mean, you could be the best fighter in the world. If you can't sell tickets, nobody's going to want you. If you think of it as a pyramid, and the base of the pyramid is the entry level to licensed fighting, licensed boxing, that entry level, you've got prospects who could be great. They've got everything going for them. Um, they're going to be good ticket sellers. They've got the, they've got the talent. They've got the pizzazz. They've got the look. They've got everything going for them. No promoter in his right mind is going to let those two get near each other in the early stages, because it's going to be far more lucrative, much higher up the triangle. That's when boxing becomes beautiful. It's when the best start fighting the best. But there's a long way to go before you reach that point. But some people think that journeymen are more than just their losing records. Boxing manager Steve Goodwin believes that his journeymen are capable of winning. And in fact, he encourages them to do so. I can only answer from my point of view. I, I would not comment on other managers because it would be just, I don't know what their conversations are. All I know is that we encourage everybody to try and win their fights. And as I say, I've had, my, I've had a journeyman beat one of my own prospects. So you do small hall shows, but would you accept that a prospect with a loss on his record is harder to pitch for a TV deal than someone who is unbeaten? Thousand percent, hundred percent, yeah. I believe that TV companies are generally interested in the zero, definitely in terms of the prospects that they are building up within house, um, and it is really because if they're investing money in that fighter, they need that zero on the whole as a building. Do you think that journeymen exist in order to pr protect that record? Not in my world, but I'm not necessarily saying that's the case, but what I think they do, especially with some TV fights, is they match them too far apart in ability levels. So the journeyman is trying his best. Whilst they're going to do their best, I believe they're going to get hurt. So I'm not going to give a fighter that I believe is going to get hurt. Steve thinks that boxing as a business encourages exciting fights, which is why journeymen are needed to go the distance. What does value for money mean? If you are a Lawrence Acoli fan, and you go to watch him fight and he knocks out somebody in 35 seconds and you've paid £60 or £70 or £100 for a ringside ticket and that's the fighter you want to see, that's not value for money. Mm -hmm. um, because you can pay £60 and go and watch a premiership football game that lasts 90 minutes and might be end-to-end -end and competitive. For retired journeyman Johnny Greaves, he feels that he could have become a prospect. But with a young family to provide for, he chose the journeyman route over the pressure to sell tickets in the home corner. Five years on from his retirement, boxing is still a huge part of his life. I miss it like a desert miss of rain. If I could go back again tomorrow, I would. Unfortunately, I'm too old, um, too ugly, um, and I've lost half my teeth, so I can't do it no more. Uh, but I, I'd go back to boxing. If I could do, I would go back to boxing tomorrow. If I sign up for another 100 fights to make it 200, all day long. I think a lot of people do go to shows expecting it to be a 50-50 fight, you know, and they're both in there to do, the, do, do their best. I mean, like I say, for me, for me, I got a first round knockout win, I think, in my fourth fight. Well, the fact I couldn't get another job for a few months after that, it wasn't in my interest. Um, I, I, you know, I, going out and winning wasn't in my best interest to earn money. So, you know, at the end of the day, for me, it's a question of, get in there, play the game, don't upset the odds, get paid, go home, fight again seven days after. Unfortunately, guys like me and Curtis and a few others are needed to keep these boys' precious undefeated records, and that's the way it works. It's the night of Curtis's fight. So, Curtis, this is your 50th fight. How are you feeling? Um, feel good, feel all right, feel focused. So I get to the weigh-in and then refuel then and I'll be buzzing then, ready to fire. It's time for the moment of truth. 
and it's good news, Curtis has made weight. The fight is against a Sheffield prospect and has six three-minute rounds. With another paid fight already lined up for next Friday, the aim is to last through all six rounds and avoid getting stopped. If he doesn't, he faces a 28-day suspension. A cruiserweight contest, this one scheduled for six three-minute rounds. Round one. See, they be moaning about the hard times, the more they do the work. Make your knees, make your knees, make your knees. 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 Make your knees, The night has not gone exactly as planned. In the fourth round, Curtis got stopped. The British Boxing Board of Control regulates that he's now suspended for four weeks, meaning next week's fight and paycheck is now off the cards. I should have moved on my feet, I just did it wrong. Do you know what I mean? It's what it is. No problem to me. To be fair, it just makes me stronger, that, so... Just got caught with a couple of shots, weren't boxing the way I should have boxed. Um, could have boxed 20 times better than that, which I know I can, but, so I'm not bothered, so I know in myself I could have done miles better. Um, I've come up a bit bruised today, not that bad. This is probably the most bruised I've been in the last 50 fights, so... Since 1929, the British Boxing Board of Control has regulated the professional side of the sport in the UK and Ireland. But how can the board allow journeyman boxers to exist? Is this about business sense preceding sporting ethics? It was time to ask the board directly what they thought of professional boxers seemingly losing for others to succeed. I don't like the term journeyman. I have a, I have a sympathy for some people who lose, obviously, if, if they feel upset. Uh, that they've lost, but I think most of the fights, certainly all the fights I've seen, and I've walked out of a venue thinking I have no, no, no issues with regard to the decision. So if you could tell us about your understanding of journeyman boxers, um, how would you define a journeyman boxer's role in a fight? He's a boxer who is generally there to uh, compete, put up a good contest. A lot of boxers you'll find have started off reasonably well and then got into a situation where maybe their career hasn't gone as well as they wanted. Um, but they're always competing um, and you'll find that they're being used or being booked to box people who are maybe coming into the sport to teach people something. Um, and you'll find people like William Warburton, who's a very good boxer, uh, pulls off a very good shock every now and again because of his skill and his ability and his knowledge and his nous. 
against people who haven't aren't so experienced. So there's always a role for these boxers in the in the sport, and uh, without them, the sport would would struggle. Certainly, some of the young people coming in, they have to learn something from some from somebody, and you can't just do that in the gym. You've got to do that out in competition as well, and that's genuinely why we term somebody a journeyman boxer. If the prospect is good enough, he'll win. If the journeyman, and it happens on regular occurrence, a journeyman has been booked to, to educate somebody and hopefully that the matchmaker's got it right, the boys, his prospect's going to get education and win the contest. But every boxer has a responsibility of, certainly prospects coming in this business, has a responsibility of selling tickets. But that's the same as any, any, any sport, any theatre. If you go to a theatre, it's not a very good show, there's nobody going to watch it. It's got to be good. But surely if the prospect has this pressure to sell tickets, there must be an additional sort of subtle pressure for the prospect to be the one who wins. No. Well, why would that be? Because, if there's it's more, good. because there's more people there to watch. There's several grand on the line. Yeah, but you're talking about people who have, unfortunately, have lost a couple of fights. And therefore they deem it as though it's gone the wrong way. If, it, if it's a really close fight, they will deem that they've won it. As I say, when I boxed and lost, I thought I was robbed all the time. But, when, but as long as I know that it was done honestly, I'm happy with that. And that's the same thing. The Boxing Board of Control acknowledged that the presence of journeymen helps prospects advance their careers. Whilst unhappy with the term journeyman, the board believed that the better fighter would win, irrespective of their titles of prospect or journeyman. This differs from other perspectives within the sport, who accept that losing is part of the journeyman game. But journeymen are not just a British phenomenon and seems to be going international. Each week, boxers from Central and Eastern Europe are flown into the UK to fill boxing bills. These boxers, who hold predominantly losing records, are often pitted against young British prospects. So why is it that matchmakers and promoters are flying abroad to find their boxers? Is the well running dry here in the UK? Or is it simply cheaper? Matchmaker Derek Waddell has become well known for sourcing foreign opponents to fight in Britain. He believes that more international journeymen is due to less interest from home fighters and because the pay is worth more abroad. How it works is um, a promoter or a manager will call you and say, look, I've got a show coming up in a week's time. Or usually it's actually, I've got a show coming up in three or four days time and uh, we need an opponent for such and such person. So what I'll do, I'll get in contact with a couple of agents in Europe that I know that have got uh, opponents around that weight. What I normally do is, um, you, like, basically I'll agree a certain budget with the promoter, which covers basically the cost of the purse, how much the foreign boxer wants or his agent, uh, the cost of the hotel, the cost of the transport, and um, basically you have to give them some food money as well. Yeah, so that's, I, I organise all of that. Years ago, uh, it used to just be all Brits against Brits. And um, you had like your regular journeymen, and uh, some of those have retired now. And what's happened over the years is that um, managers and promoters have found it uh, increasingly difficult to get, um, you know, local domestic, you know, UK journeymen to fight up and coming prospects. So. People have been, you know, going abroad now, looking abroad. From the Czech Republic, journeyman Jan Balog was flown in for an upcoming fight. Boxovat, protože u vás v Londýně nebo vlastně v celé anglické zemi je, je velice skutečný k dobrým boxerům a líp se tady boxuje, protože člověk získává větší zkušenosti a buď může se může se vytáhnout na nějakou lepší úroveň a zároveň zkusit lepší zkušenosti, dostat větší zkušenosti. Než, než u nás v republice je málo akcí a tady u vás v, je v Anglii akce větší než u nás v České republice. Je toho tady víc, u nás je toho málo. No. Je, doma, doma mi budou držet v palci určitě rodina, jo, manželka, děti, tchán, rodina, že? Samozřejmě kamarádi, trenéři, kteří, kteří mě vedou a trénují a dobrý kamarádi, jak je Luboš Urban a podobně. They, they kind of pretty much know what, you know what is expected of them. They know, you know, they, they know what they're involved in. They're coming over here and they've been selected. You know, they know that somebody's done the homework and looked at their, the standard that they're at and looked at the standard, the quality of the UK guy and they pretty much know that the, the guy's better than them. So it's not fixed in the sense that it, nothing's really pre-arranged or anything, but you do your homework to, to make sure that one guy, or you think, 
that, that, that one guy looks like he's better or worse than the other guy. How do you feel when you lose a fight? Mm -hmm. Samozřejmě, když se člověk hodně připravuje na zápasy a cítí, že tam může vyhrát a přijde lepší soupeř, lepší, lepších kvalit a podobně, tak je tam hodně velké trápení, že v tom ho nějakým způsobem přeboxovat, nebo když to nejde, že, nebo tohle je lepší, tak prohraju ten zápas, jsem rád, že ho do boxu na body, že neprohraju nějakým těžším zraněním nebo nějakým takovým způsobem, to do boxu dokonce, samozřejmě, tak potom podám úctu k soupeři, protože byl lepší. Tak to beru tak, že jsem prostě prohrál a tak to prostě já jedu dál, že nic se nemění, prostě neskloním hlavu a říkám si, nevadí, prohrál jsem příště to zase vyjde a, a přijde den, kdy znova zase vyhraju třeba, no, tak. If you look at the average monthly wages in Eastern Europe for an unskilled working class person, it's probably three, four hundred pounds a month. So if they come over here and have a fight, even a four round fight, they could pick up about, you know, Eight, nine, hundred thousand pound. That's that's two months' wages. If they see, if they think that they could actually get through it and just lose on points, they'll come over and they'll do that a couple of times a month, and that's a lot of money. It's a lot of money for them back home from from where they're from. Někdy to beru tak, že když prohraju zápas, tak jsem z toho smutný, protože vím, že jsem tam mohl udělat víc. Jo, a soupeř nedovolil. Záleží, co vám soupeř dovolí, že. A když se člověk víc snaží. Tak buď vyhraje nebo prohraje, protože tým ten soupeř je lepší, že jo? Tak jako, když prohraju ten zápas, tak jsem z toho smutný. A když pocity jsou takové o, různé, o různým pádu, o různé pády jsou ty pocity. Výhra, smutek, jo, pláč, jakdy, no ale jako cítím se dobře. Beru to tak, že si řeknu, dobře, prohrál jsem, život je dál, budu zase trénovat a, a uvidíme, příště to zase vyjde, nebo tak no, podobně. The only way we can possibly change it is by demanding the general public spend money on tickets. How else is it going to work? Contrary to popular belief, a journeyman is not a punch bag. Far from it. A journeyman is a competent fighter who knows his way around the ring. And he's, play, he's there to play his part. Every boxer who gets into the ring has a standard, some sort of standard. Some people are better than others. That's what sport's all about. In a perfect world, I'd love to see it change. I'd love to watch boxing and see every fight being a 50-50, but it's not, and it never will be. Really, I'm not losing, I'm winning. You know why I'm winning? Because I'm getting paid. And I'm paying for, I'm, and my kids are getting a good upbringing off it. But I've been wasting words on wasted gas from time to time to pass the time from rap to grand Carino shine from nine to five the walls are left. But now my time efficiency is messing with the industry. I'm literally in symmetry, and these men here they caught the vibe and visually in symphony. Express myself implicitly and willfully get what I want, and I will show my souls alive.